Hello, and welcome to today's podcast. I'm Susan Guthrie, your host, and today I have a very special guest, Dr. Anna Kabeca. She's known as the girlfriend doctor, but gentlemen, don't let that put you off because she can also be the boyfriend doctor. Today, she's here to help us talk about stress and how we can help stress from stressing us out. Um, Dr. Kabeca is triple board certified and she is a trained OBGYN, but she has translated her experience in both life and practice into two best selling books, one of which is The Hormone Fix, which I'm holding up for those of you who are watching. And if you can see, it's all tabbed up and marked up because I've been going through it myself, as well as The Keto Green 16. Um, which is there's a portion of that here in uh, the hormone fix. Um, but so she's here today. We're going to talk about both her own experience as well as how that led her um, to explore more of the ways that medical science, um, both integratively as well as more traditionally medically, can help us to manage the stress in our life. So, Dr. Anna, thank you so much for joining me today. So Dr. Anna, thank you so much for joining us here today. I know my listeners are really going to benefit from your wisdom. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. You know, this, I love this topic. I know your book as I was just uh, talking about it in the, or one of your books, since you have a couple, um, talks about a myriad of different things, but I was really honing in on chapter eight, which is stop stress from stressing you out because uh, one, you know, in so many different ways that spoke to me just from the perspective of my listeners who are going through an incredibly stressful time, many of them, and just in general, because I think as we live in the world we're in at the moment with the conflict in the world, with COVID as a part of our life now for a year, everyone's feeling a lot of stress. So let's, I, I would love to dive in first, because one thing that you said that really jumped out was the heart feels tragedy. The heart actually hurts with tragedy. And I know you have your own story about that. And, and so, you know, whatever you're w willing to share or talk about it, it, with respect to tragedy and how we actually experience that physically. Yeah, no, it's pretty amazing. Um, having gone through, you know, having a medical education, right. And working with women's for, for decades, and then having my own experience with trauma and tragedy and loss and grief and uh, pain. And um, it's great that you honed in on chapter eight, because I do feel like that is mandatory reading for everyone at this time period. And, you know, understanding what is happening when we experience stress, either acute stress, like in trauma, or in chronic everyday stress that we may be experiencing right now as well, and how that can affect us and how that can affect our, our physiology and our well being for sure. And so many times I'll have people say, wow, this really helped me understand what happened to me. This really helped me understand why I felt that way, why I thought that way, or why I rebounded that way, or, you know, and, and so much comes up because you know, you know, we really don't have any guidance in this area, do we? There's very, no very little. No, yeah. and people, you know, it's making me think of, as you're saying that I was doing a mediation the other day with some clients and the, the female partner in the relationship just in the middle of everything burst into tears and just started, you know, having said, I feel like I'm having a nervous breakdown. I can't take it anymore. And I'm saying that just like she said, it, except it was at a much louder decibel. Uh, but she was truly, she hit a breaking point in the middle of the dif difficult conversations we were having and said, you know, my heart hurts, my heart rates up. I, I feel like I'm having a breakdown and, and it was a very physical thing for her. Absolutely. Absolutely. Our, our body is holding this emotion and the energy. And what was really fascinating is, you know, in, in my story, we, we suffered the loss of my child and um, our child, and he was only 18 months old and it was a tragic accident. And from that point, like that, like, you know, the stress and the trauma and the grief and the loss and Physically, as I write about in my book, my heart hurt, my heart hurt physically. And it, you know, 
um, being right at the field I'm at, able to intellectualize as well as experience at the same time, the full depth of what's happening is understanding that, you know, the heart does hold emotion, right? The heart does hold emotion. And in fact, it's, it's abundant with oxytocin receptors, which is the hormone of love and connection and bonding. And how fascinating that, you know, like the, the term heartache, you know, really was a physical, is a physical phenomenon is truly a physical phenomenon because of our, our bodies make up our physiology. And, and this is something that's so really so powerful. I want people to understand is that, you know, with, with our behavior, our thoughts, our behavior, you know, our, our behavior drives our physiology as our physiology drives our behavior and where we put our mind, where we put our intentions, our physiology follows. So it becomes a true discipline to in the in the midst of heartache in the midst of trauma in the midst of divorce in the midst of you know feel beyond stress right to sit into the space of heart opening heart expansion and and from from that that therapeutic i mean really it's it's a therapy it's a discipline and a practice because you're not going to feel like it you're heck no going to feel like it like you know and for so many ways, right? And so being able to create this practice because it's it's essential. It's essential for our well-being and those that we love that are often in the fallout of the trauma as well. And and that's a, that really becomes a priority, this heart opening, this sense of being in touch with your reality, what really is going on. And then also the self-care model because resentment is a lack of self-care. And when we are stressed, we are disconnected beyond what are we're thinking, right? There's a physiology to this symptom of disconnect. I will say there's a physiology to divorce too, especially in times of stress. Oh, there absolutely is. And what you just said something that I thought was so insightful about resentment being a lack of self-care that is, you know, I'm always talking about self-care for my listeners and for myself as well. It's something that during, especially during COVID, um, as I have gotten busier and busier in my world, I, I have had to literally schedule times of self-care into my schedule, um, times where I can take care of me. But you're right. You don't want to. You, 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 I don't want to jump on the exercise bike or go for a walk or even pause because I'm in the middle of something that's got to get done. And I know for a lot of my listeners that that overwhelm, that feeling of just, I can't, like my client that I was talking about, I cannot deal with this. I just can't. I want to crawl into bed and pull the covers over my head and just have it all go away. And what I found so fascinating in chapter eight, I, re- I read it, you can see the tabs here and it's underlined, it's highlighted, but it that there is a very real, um, it, physiological reaction going on in our bodies with our hormones and how, you know, what I found fascinating was hormones affecting our stress level and stress levels affecting our hormones. So we've got this horrible little hamster wheel uh, Mm -hmm. that's very hard to get off of. That is so, that is so true. And I'm glad you recognize that because it is, it ends up feeling this downward spiral and we're sinking and it can absolutely feel like that too. It's like, man, I, I don't even know how to get up from here. You know, how do I take the next step? And, you know, it does, it's, it starts with that awareness. Okay. There's, you know, I would say, well, physiology drives behavior. The good news is our behavior can drive our physiology too. And so these little things that we can do to help improve, to you know, help improve our physiology, which is getting outside and having that sunshine walk, the discipline of of movement activity that you love and enjoy on a a daily practice that the um, thoughts that we're keeping and the direction of our thoughts, especially in midst of trauma. I mean, I, I remember, you know, I remember Susan just waking up and before I even opened my eyes, just crying because I didn't know how I was going to be able to face this day. I couldn't imagine having to face another day. And that, you know, was just, okay, just my next step is to put my feet on the floor, right? That's just the next step. And, and you just go from there. And that, um, this whole process and this whole evolution of, of healing and coming to a place of, um, 
gratitude, honestly, gratitude, not for the trauma, but gratitude to, you know, for the experiences that I have now and the lives that I can improve and, and whatever the number of things, the children in my life, you know, I mean, that thousands of things that are on a daily basis, that focus on what, what I have and what I get to do versus what I've lost and what I miss and, you know, what could have been that focus is a daily practice and a discipline that, that does, that helps me, that helps me show up, not just for the, you know, not just for my daughters, but really, and, and for myself, but for, for the world. Right. Well, which is what can lead you to help us all with books like the hormone fix and, you know, put so much wisdom out there in the world. And, you know, one of the things you just said that I think will hopefully resonate with people who are listening is that there are real actionable steps that you can take, because this is a physiological thing that's happening for you. You aren't just you know, depressed. Well, you may be depressed. I, I shouldn't say it that way. What I want is it, it's not just situational. There are things happening in your body that can be reset or that you can work on through certain, you know, functionality that you talk about in the book. One of them you, you just mentioned was the activities that you love. Um, and they may not be the activities that you love in this, in this state that you're in. Um, and it's not, I love, you said, is it Zumba? Is it, you know, is it spinning? Like I like, it's whatever you love to do. Um, and part of that I think is connecting with yourself and what did in the past or might in the future bring you joy. Yeah. And it's often like, you know, I always tell clients and things that you do just because, you know, you have to do them and you may not want to, but you know, at the end of that activity, for example, I never like going to the gym, but I'm always glad to leave when I'm always glad that I went when I'm leaving. Right. I mean, it is. And just recognizing that, okay, this did me good, you know, to whatever level, not to burn us out, but to restore us. And so you're leaving feeling energized or you do the, you know, flash dance activity or whatever you want to do. And you leave feeling energized. And that's important part of, of this work, of this restoring our physiology so that our behavior improves, right? We can't give from an empty cup. We can't give from an empty cup. And often, especially in divorce, and I know as a fallout of our trauma, as much as we wanted our marriage to work, it, it didn't, it fell apart. And that's why from firsthand experience, I talk about the, the physiology of divorce, the cortisol, oxytocin, dis you know, I love my husband. I don't feel love for him. I love my work. I don't feel love for work. You know, I know I love my kids, but right now, like I'm not even feeling it, right? That feeling is physiology. And so we can't think ourselves better, you know, pray ourselves better. I mean, it really helps. It really helps, but there's a lot more to it. That's why it's a, it's a lifestyle approach that we take in this healing, healing our physiology. And I think that's what's really important. You know, I've been divorced now 10 years and I've had the perspective throughout like, okay, well, what happened? Went from wanting it to work to completely nothing, right? Just the disconnect thinking I can't even breathe or live another day this way in this relationship and just, it's not nothing. And so that's, a, that's an extreme, I believe but there's many levels of this, right? Right. Right. Well, you know, and you mentioned those two hormones that I think we've all heard so much about. Certainly um, my listeners, uh, Bella Gandhi, who introduced you and I is one of my very popular guests. She's been on a couple of times and she loves to talk about oxytocin, the yeah. love hormone, my but you favorite. just mentioned its counterpart, the cortisol. And maybe, you know, I think it would help people to understand, because I know it helped me in your book, you talk about what is actually happening with those two hormones when stress gets involved in our lives. Yeah, which is really interesting because it's not something I studied in, in med school and certainly not in residency. And it's really fascinating because oxytocin, especially for pregnancy, it's a really powerful hormone. It helps us deliver our baby. Anyone who's had a baby, you know, and been in labor and you receive pitocin, that's oxytocin, that's IV oxytocin that helps the uterus contract. And by design, it's a powerful bonding hormone in women. So when we deliver this baby, we are bonded to this baby. We are going to 
live life for this baby, right? Because of this hormone oxytocin. That's why that hormone oxytocin is so important. Why labor is so important. Contractions are so important. Breastfeeding is so important so that we can um, have this oxytocin, this physiology to bond with our child. It's also a natural pain reliever. So oxytocin has so many benefits. It is absolutely, I call it the, the crowning hormone. It is the most important hormone in our body. It trumps every other hormone. And at the end of our days, it's the oxytocin in our life that matters over our financial wealth, over the house we live in, over the car we drive. It is the relationships that we have that are loving and valuable to us that matter. And that's, this is from, this is from this connection that we get from a hormone of oxytocin, love and connection, joy, happiness. This is a dominant hormone. Now what happens, and this was fascinating for me because like the whole experience of wanted my marriage to work, you know, after our son's accident, everything we wanted to stay together, we went to counseling. We're like, we know 75% of marriages fail when they lost a child, but they don't say, well, why do they fail? Well, this is why they fail. This yeah. is number one, why they fail. I mean, other circumstances, everyone grieves in their own way, but understanding this physiology is hugely important. And so what happens is, you know, we experience a loss, trauma, chronic everyday stress. I mean, cortisol is our stress fighting hormone. It is a survival hormone. It is there to support us. It's a natural steroid. It's a natural anti-inflammatory. It comes to our rescue, right? And again, it is, it is a first responder in the time of acute stress. And over time with post-traumatic stress and chronic everyday stress, your body's like, oh, actually an area in the brain called the paraventricular nucleus is like, okay, you know, you guys are, you, you know, this cortisol is stressing me out. I'm putting the brakes on you because you're frying out my nervous system, right? You actually can mm -hmm. feel that wired fried sensation. I remember feeling like every nerve ending in my body was fried. Yep. Yep. That tingle exactly. almost, yeah, yes. <laughs> that yep. electrical it, burnout. It, it's so interesting and um, exactly. And so the PV, PVN will also, when cortisol goes up, oxytocin goes down. But now when cortisol is up for a long time and your PVN of the brain is saying, okay, you're frying me out, we're going to put the brakes on cortisol. So cortisol and oxytocin are then suppressed both. And this is that stage of burnout. Right. This is that stage of disconnect. This is that stage of, you know, I love my husband. I don't feel love for him. I love my job. I don't feel love for it. That's burnout. And that is not the place to make a decision. That no. is not the time to make a life changing decision, whether it be career, relational, et cetera, until we fix this physiology and decide. And, you know, it just brings me a funny, a funny point being that you're a divorce attorney. <laughs> I, um, you know, um, had, uh, I went to my divorce attorney, uh, the first year I went to my attorney, and it was also one of my patients and she, um, I went in December and she goes, Anna, I am not filing divorce papers in December. No way am I filing divorce papers in Christmas. Heck no. And it's a stressful time. Right. And Absolutely. like, okay, okay. I was like, okay, Denise, you know, I'll, I'll come after the first of the year. Well, a year later in December, I came back to my divorce attorney <laughs> and I'm like, Denise, nope, I can't do it. She goes, Anna, I am not filing divorce papers in December. I'm sorry. And so, you know, several months later I came back in I said, okay, I just, I can't do it, but that they funny. Called, yeah. Well that they call January divorce month because so many people will hold off for December or the holidays send their stress levels up through the roof and they get through it and they're like, not doing that again. So yeah. we, uh, we're, we're right in the middle of that as we are taping this. Yeah. Well, and it's important to understand that physiology, that cortisol oxytocin disconnect. So you feel disconnected. It's okay. We'll take a vacation first, do some self-care, restore work on things from a positive perspective. How do we refill our tank? So we're giving from an overflowing cup and, and then, okay, I can make decision when I'm, you know, 
more rational and logical and grounded and able to handle the next steps so much better than if I'm already empty from December, December stress. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's so critical. I hope everybody who's listening is hearing that in other episodes I've talked about, you know, the, the stress of making the decision to divorce is it's usually a long process yes. for some people it's years of back and forth. And what are we going to do? And then people will decide to divorce and launch themselves into the process. Like we, it's a race to get it done. And I understand there's that, okay, I've been in this cycle for a long time, but what you just said is so critical for them to understand that when you are depleted and stressed, and then you are called upon to make decisions about your children, about your finances, about your future, this is the worst possible time for you to be doing that. So what you were just talking about in being able to reset and restore those hormones, get our cortisol under control, get our oxytocin back up is critical, not just for feeling better, but for truly moving forward in a better way for your family and for yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's critical. So we talked about adding in some activities that you love and that those can affect the, the hormones, but you have other tips that I think, you know, I think people have heard, oh, go and exercise. You're going to feel better, but you say stay nutritionally alkaline. And honestly, I'm a person. I, I love to read about nutrition. I truly believe in food as medicine, but this was something that I, I just didn't have a good grasp on until I read your book. And I just want to point out to people, one of the gifts of your book is that you, you put things in terms that make them very easily digestible. And so thank you for that. That is a gift um, as for you as an author, but how does staying nutritionally alkaline, what does that mean? And how does that help? Oh my gosh. And it is crucially important. Important. I want to jump back into the physiology of cortisol and oxytocin a moment because cortisol, that stress hormone, it's a highly acidic hormone. I mean, it's going to take what it needs in order to function. Like if you're going to need your minerals and it will break down. It is a, you know, hormone anabolic, you know, it's a um, catabolic hormone. So it breaks you down. And, and so cortisol is that life-saving hormone, right? But very acidic hormone. So with, and oxytocin is the opposite, the most alkaline hormone of our body. So nutritionally, like, so there's a couple things I tell clients that first of all, I want you to check your urine pH, not your blood pH It's totally different, but your urine pH, because that's a vital sign. And you can get pH paper at the grocery store. And it's just the, you know, pH, you know, paper, and it will check for, you know, acidity versus alkalinity. Very, very inexpensive. I've created some with pH and ketones. Cause that's the, you have them on the, the website. Yeah. Yeah. To look at ketones too, because we want to get into that state. And um, so with that pH, that this is the most important, like get alkaline before you go in even into ketosis, but what a grounding state. So understanding that nutritionally, it's the alkalinizing vegetables, the herbs, staying away from sugars, staying away from inflammatory foods, right? Healing our body nutritionally from that way. And I always say, you know, as a physician, right? Food is medicine, but in ancient, with ancient history, ancient Turkey, even that the, the physician to the king was the chef, right? Prepared the food and again, prepared the, you know, that situ that entire experience was governed by the physician to the, the, the king, the culinary experience. So hence the medicinal foods and herbs and spices that are really abundant, especially in the Middle East, right? right. And this is, those are a lot alkalinizing herbs and alkalinizing spices and works foods for digestion and supporting, you know, stress and hormonal imbalance. So I found that to be incredibly fascinating. And, and then one thing, so when I started doing this and experiencing this, and I was really uh, struggling that check and checking my urine pH as a, as a OBGYN, as a functional doc. I mean, any patient that comes in your office, you're checking one of the markers on a urine test strip is pH. We did very little with it, but as I started understanding detox and empowering the body to heal itself, like check your urine pH, I want it to get alkaline. You need more alkalinizing foods for hormone balance, right? As women, this is critically important because we have 10 times less testosterone than men, which will keep them in, you know, stronger, keep their muscle and 
bones intact, man, we'll use up our minerals in our bones at a heartbeat, right? To, to produce our hormones, our stress hormones for survival. And that's just by design. So what's fascinating is I, as I started checking myself, I was so acidic on the urine pH paper. I was like, no wonder I'm feeling fried, irritable, anxious. I'm overreacting where I normally would, you know, take a deep breath and respond and be logical. I'm like, what happened to my logical brain? It's disappeared. And so I had this very acidic physiology. And as I work to add in the alkalinizer, the greens, the green part of my keto green plan, as I work to add in the greens, I also noted as I'm testing every, every time I use the bathroom, testing your pH, those mornings I would go out and walk on the beach. Those mornings I would do my gratitude journaling. I was more alkaline all day. So this oxytocin hormone is powerfully al you know, alkalinizing, the most powerful alkaline hormone of our body. So when we're having fun, when we're laughing, when we feel intimacy and connection, feeling loved and, and valued, we're more out the alkaline from that hormonal piece. So a lot of that can overcome a pretty, a pretty bad diet, but combine the two and it is game changing. It is game changing. I feel like this is the, this, that's the physiology we want to be in, to make really good decisions for ourselves. This is a physiology, okay, I'm on stable ground. Here I can make the best decisions for myself, my family, and, um, you know, and, and then, and then act from that. But that is, that's the power of physiology and our hormones. And that has not, not been addressed. And it was over like digging into actually a hundred years of research to really come up with come up with some other science around this. It's been pretty, pretty fascinating, but knowing it and now working with you know, thousands of women that are doing, you know, checking their urine pH and, and seeing the difference that it makes on their physiology and, and their, of course, their physical health right. is just, and mental health has been just been tremendous. Well, and what I, I love about this for people who are listening, who are feeling at a time in their lives where they are powerless, think of the power of what you just were saying. You yourselves out there have the power to make yourself feel better, to help yourself get into that alkaline state and feel better. That's what I jumped on here because I will tell you, I am a sugar freak. Um, I am a person who, if there's a donut in front of me, that is very hard for me to resist. When I understood what you just said there, when I read it in the book, I can look at a donut now and look at it not as, it's almost like I'm looking at it and going, wow, you are not going to make me feel good. You may make me feel good in the moment of you taste good, but I see it in a whole different way. And I know my listeners are out there laughing at me because I always talk about my love of donuts, but I tell you what, it. everybody, I love it. Susan, I'm off the great. donuts. I'm off the donuts, <laughs> but it's so true. You know, it, I so think true. It, and, and we have the power. We yes. decide what we put into our mouths, what we are going to feed ourselves. That is a small, what sounds maybe like a small choice for everyone out there who's feeling overwhelmed or feeling horrible, but just think about the difference you can make in your life by, by eating more greens, by keeping a more alkaline diet and making yourself feel better. It will have a huge effect. That was one for me that I just thought was, you know, wow, people need to know about this. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's part of like in the, the healing our physiology and we can feel so depleted and it can feel overwhelming to say, okay, well now I've got to do something else. Like I've got to put more greens in. I've got to do that. You can make a green smoothie. I created a formula that's adaptogenic with 30 superfoods, very alkalinizing. You can just add that to some water and drink it down once, twice a day. You need it during this time of stress. We all need it during this time of stress. I swear I'm on two to three scoops a day right now. I'm like, it is, it is essential. And just to aid in a healthy diet and lifestyle. And especially if we're not getting outside as much, especially if we're not having that downtime as much and getting into nature because nature is a huge alkalinizer. Walk in the park, walk on the beach. Wow. Watch your, watch your urine pH change. I mean, how cool is that? Right. Yeah. I mean, so cool. and the fact that you can actually test it, I love that part too, because you, you know, um, Dr. Elizabeth Cohen, she's known as the divorce doctor. I don't know if you met her, but she's fabulous. And she's been on the show a number of times. She's uh, one of my listeners, favorite guests. And she said, you know, if you're feeling 
uh, acute anxiety, depression, a lot of those things, go put your feet in the grass. Just go stand. Now I'm in Michigan in the middle of winter with six inches. I'm not going to do that today, but she's right. (laughs) That will, (laughs) I'm definitely not putting my feet in the snow, but it will make a difference in your day. It takes that push to get you out the door or to get you to do something, but you know, putting a scoop of, of the greens into a glass and drinking it, knowing that you can adjust what you're um, adding. You said you're on two or three scoops a day. Those are the types of things that we have just an utter control over once we understand the issue. And now you mentioned, because I know another one of your tips is to consider extra supplements. And you mentioned that, you know, the green scoops, but can you, can you describe just a little bit more about what the supplements are and what you might want to add? Yeah, definitely for stress management and to really support our body. And be, coming from being a single mom, I had one wee one in elementary school and two teenagers at the time going from, you can imagine, right. And I would, you know, I was the bad guy in the situation. My teenage daughters, all girls, all girls. And my teenage daughters were having a really rough time. I just want to emphasize that when I switched my physiology, when I did the self-care, when I became keto green, and this is why I'm so passionate about helping others do the same thing. I went from, you know, I went from overreacting to responding, nothing in my external environment changed. I mean, like all hell has broken loose, right? Everything was terrible. My kids, my teenage daughters, it felt like they hated me. I asked them, I said, girls, let me know when you stop hating me. They're like, we don't hate you. I'm like, it feels like you hate me. And um, so it went from that to like, oh my gosh, smiles and kisses in the morning. I mean, seriously, like what, what alternate reality did I step in just because I started healing myself? changing my physiology, focusing on the oxytocin, the alkalinizing component of, of, of this, of the lifestyle that, that I'm so passionate about writing about. I mean, that shifted my relationships, nothing in the external environment changed, but the way I responded and reacted and how that influenced my kids, how my energy flew into them. So they were calmer, more loving, more at peace, more grounded, huge, huge difference, right? Huge difference. Yes. Emphasize that enough. Cause we think, oh my gosh, I just got to take care of them. I got to do a, B and C and you know, yeah. You know, it just adds to the burnout, unfortunately, it adds to the right? burnout and everyone involved, right. Mm-hmm. That has been game changing in, in my life and recognizing that again, back to the resentment is lack of self-care, right. Comment, right. Yes. That, is, that is true. And so, so a couple, you know, things when we're looking at the, this physiology, the physiology of stress and, and burnout, the few things that we really can do to help is, is supplementation. When we, we have a hard time and with this and it's supplements are truly beneficial when we're burning out like this, we need adrenal support. We need adaptogenic support, meaning just support really to help us in this time of stress and to adapt whether we're exhausted or wired, right? And, and that's where adaptogens come in. And through my journey, my own healing journey around the world and in, in my post-traumatic state, I found some many, many um, healing herbs and, and ingredients, including maca, which is an adaptogenic root that grows its origin is in Peru in the Andes in the mountains of Peru above 11,000 feet. So this, or, you know, this beautiful root has been shown to have balancing our hormones, improve our, our sex drive, help with mood, help with hot flashes. And there's so much good research around it. And when I was in Peru, they would say, if you're tired, drink maca. If you're, if you're um, infertile, drink maca. If you're, you know, whatever it may be. Having a bad day, drink drink maca. maca. Exactly. And they would, uh, you know, elbowed my husband at the time we were still married. And they say, it's the Peruvian Viagra, drink some maca. And I was like, okay, as a scientist, why? But then of course I'm like, give me that maca, right? I'm going to drink it. But I couldn't stand the taste, Susan. So that's how I ended up creating my formula as I continue to learn about some of these traditional medicines that, you know, herbs and spices and roots and fruits that have an extracts that have been used over thousands of years and started to incorporate them. So like turmeric, oh man, we should be cooking with turmeric. We're going to make turmeric, you know, what a golden, golden milk or golden milk. tea, turmeric. Yeah. Hot served with coconut milk. I mean, just incorporating some of these herbs and spices that are so medicinal and alkalinizing 
and detoxifying, but maca specifically is adaptogenic. So is resveratrol, quercetin, and um, and there's so many there's so many more. Turmeric being also adaptogenic, and that's really power. These are powerful combination. They're all combined into my into my formula that I created. But you know, definitely things that you can get and find out there. But you really want to choose wisely. So that's that's like this adaptogenic support that you want to look at. And then of course, fish oils, we burn ourselves out in times of stress. So we need the healthy fats. So really healthy fats for healthy hormones. So hence in my keto green plan, we really talk about healthy, good fats like olive oil and from salmon and fish oils and things like that, that we want to incorporate because those are neuroprotective. Those help with depression. They help at the cell membrane level with our physiology. Allergy. So fish oils is high on my list. And then of course the high quality vitamin Bs and C, when we are stressed, our adrenals deplete, we use up vitamin C and B vitamins to make our stress hormones. So Thank we you. have to replenish them certainly through our diet, but I find that extra supplementation is essential during this time period. It's part of filling our tank, right? It is part of filling our tank or actually patching up the holes at the bottom of our tank because yeah. we keep emptying out. Yeah. 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 Well, and I think that's, that's really, um, very easy to understand once I was reading that in the book and it, I sort of looked at it as in certain times in our life or in certain weather, we add special things to the fuel in our car. So it might run better, or we have to, you know, get more oil. Um, I know one of my doctors years ago told me I, I take fish oil, um, or omegas, um, every day, but during the winter, when I suffer from seasonal affective disorder, they had me up that. And I didn't understand why though, you know, you do what your doctors tell you. You don't un always understand why you're doing it. Another reason why I loved the book so much. Now I understand why you're supposed to do that. And I will say, I just went on the website today and ordered a bunch of the supplements, um, and things. I'm excited to try them. I've been using maca for, um, a long time, but you're the taste. It's a good point. You can't, it's not something I found I could do alone. I throw it in with a, a cacao and uh, greens and, uh, anything else I can find them at. Yeah, exactly. So I can't wait to try your formula. I um, love it. Vitamin D with seasonal affective disorder is another one, like, especially now again, vitamin D. And I just tested someone recently with, with her labs and she's been supplementing, but again, with quarantine, I'm seeing lower and lower vitamin D levels. So we really have to up our, our vitamin D and it's always vitamin D three supplementation with K2 and look at my website. There's the perfect formula on there for really boosting up your vitamin D. So that's my gold standard to get something similar to that, you know, and that is, um, and that makes a big difference in seasonal affective disorder, as well as vitamin D is this pro hormone that's necessary for all our other hormones to work. So including oxytocin, including progesterone, our neuroprotective hormone, which is completely depleted to make cortisol. So during this stress time, during divorce time, what do we see? You know, patients certainly come to their gynecologist because they're having dysfunctional bleeding, irregular cycles, heavier than normal periods, you know, PMS is out the roof, right? And yeah. so that is, that is something to, to be aware of. And, you know, I always tell clients, especially in the, if having a lot of PMS, or if they only hate their husband two weeks out of the month, <laughs> it's more likely their hormones. So yeah. oh, to, to really um, address those issues. Good point. Well, and I do want to point out you and I are going to talk a little bit more about another chapter in your book, which is getting your sexy back. Um, we're going to do a, an episode for the members only section in a minute. So if people who are listening now who want to hear more, just uh, join the members only section, it'll be another episode there on getting your sexy back. Um, but I did want to, I, I've been referencing your uh, website. I've been on it extensively myself, as I, I just mentioned buying things and, and just, there's a wealth of information there. Um, we can only cover so much in, in a half hour on this show. So, uh, but please tell people where they can reach out for more information. And I think you have a program coming up as well. You mentioned. Yes. Yes. So, um, my website is easy, dranna.com, D-R-A-N-N-A.com. And that will get you to my website. And we have a, I have my girlfriend doctor show. So I'm known as the girlfriend doctor. And I love that because you can ask or tell me anything really. And I'm here to help and answer. And so within my girlfriend doctor membership, which we 
started this year, we have these uncensored conversations, which are really important to have. And it's amazing the healing that I'm seeing happening and the, the, um, um, sharing that's happening inside this, where some people are saying, I've never shared this with anyone. I'm having this issue. And we had a woman recently, she's like, you know, my husband said for me to ask you this, and he's, he's fine. He wants me to share it because he knows that other people out there are having the same problem. It was erectile issues. And what can he do? And I, I love that. I'm like, yes, that we want to have these conversations because often we're not speaking them and we're powering through or struggling. And, and this is what's really important. So we're doing that in the Gulf and Dr. Club and excited about that too. Yeah, I'm excited to have I, you in there giving an exclusive as well. I'm excited to talk with your, with your members. And it's uh, when in the intro, I, I said, you're known as the girlfriend doctor, but you can be the boyfriend doctor too. So <laughs> I mean, you just pointed that out. So I will have um, links to all the website, to the book, um, to everything in the show notes. And I just thank you so much for really being here, putting this into terms that are so easily understandable for people. It really felt for me, and I've you know been on this planet for a good long time. Um, it, in reading the book, it just felt like, you know, that the, 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 the reality had been revealed, you know, like the secret of the world is here now, if I can just understand it. Um, and I know it came through a lot of life experience for you and a lot of travel and a lot of study. Um, so I appreciate so much that you're sharing it and you're sharing it with my listeners. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate being here. It's such important, important information. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely.